Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Even though the weather is still very humid and hot in some regions, in Montreal, Canada, it is becoming cooler and cooler. Fall will be here soon and we will get to enjoy fall colors. In my opinion, fall is also the best season to strengthen our body. You can take some tonic herbs, supplements, or some dietary products such as Canadian ginseng and royal jelly, so that you'll be ready for the coming winter. This is the seventh topic in contrasting the three internal styles. Prior contrast videos focused on specific physical areas of the body such as knees, feet, footwork, dantian, and so on. From today, I will focus on rather abstract topics. It is a higher level of this discussion since this approach will elaborate martial principles, which are often intangible concepts. In teaching, I always try to figure out ways to help my students understand their practice better by introducing and emphasizing some important principles in expecting them to apply these principles in their practice. Based on my experience, higher level of practice requires to understand some higher level of knowledge beyond the physical movements. Those knowledge are practice-related principles and will definitely help you reach a new level in the long run. Principles matter in the traditional training system. So, topics covered in today's video include 1. Dong and Jing in Chinese philosophy 2. Dong and Jing in martial art 3. Dong and Jing in internal styles 4. Demonstration 5. Take aways Again, this topic is a bit abstract, and it requires basic knowledge and the training experience of more than one internal style, preferably all three systems. Regardless, it should still help you understand your practice better even if you only practice one style. So, let's get started. Topic 1. Dong and Jing in Chinese Philosophy I have introduced the yin-yang concept in my prior videos, especially my Xiu Dao videos. Basically, as a fundamental concept in Chinese philosophy and culture, yin and yang are two inseparable and contradictory factors in the universe. Since yin and yang can be used to explain different characteristics of any entity, very often, Chinese people apply this theory to categorize and analyze different phenomena and experiences in daily life. One important theory in ancient Chinese philosophy is Dong Jing which is considered as one of the most disputable topics in Chinese history. Most Chinese scholars and philosophers in the ancient times almost unanimously agreed on yin and yang, but has been a lot of disagreement on dong jing as well. So, what is dong jing? According to ancient Chinese philosophy, Dong means movement, while Jing means stillness. Dong can also mean having desire, action, and uh, vigorous and energetic. Likewise, Jing can also mean stillness, means no desire, no action, flexible and accommodating. This topic is related to the question of whether the world is in motion, dynamic, changing, or not. In ancient times, most Chinese philosophers believed that there were no unchangeable things in the universe, and everything was relative instead of ultimate. 
Again, Lao Tzu was the first person who discussed Dong and Jing as a philosophical topics. For example, he said that Dong and Jing are interchangeable under certain conditions. So, basically, most Chinese philosophers in ancient times believed that the cosmological aspect of the universe was based on movement or Dong. Only some believed the opposite. Also, Dong and the Jing concept of movement and stillness has been applied in different areas including art, literature, poetry, and others due to its core concept being related to Chinese philosophy. For example, in traditional Chinese poetry, Dong and Jing is a very popular method to describe and express a specific meaning. A pair of sentences is the basic unit to a poem. So, very often, a poet may apply movement to one sentence and stillness to the other. Let me make Wang Wei's famous poem, Autumn Evening in Mountain, as an example to explain it. The third and the fourth sentences in his poem are Ming Yue Song Jian Zhao, Qing Quan Shi Shang Liu. As all a silvery moon is shining through the pines, the lipid brooks are gargling over the stones. The, the first sentence, a silvery moon is shining through the pines, use, uses stillness as its rhetoric. The second sentence, the limpid brook are gargling over the stones, uses movement as its rhetoric. As a result, the comparison between the movement and the stillness has created an even stronger feeling and impression of the stillness effect in its reader's mind. Of course, it is an example of a Yi Jing concept, or aesthetic conception as well, which I introduced in my prior video. Also, please see this painting which was based on the poem. So, Dong Jing is an important as well as interesting topic in Chinese culture. At this moment, you may have a question for me. Why is he talking about this? Does it have anything to do with the internal style? To which I would reply, yes, of course. Please keep watching and I will explain it in the next topic. Topic 2. Dong and Jing in martial art. Before we talk about the Dong Jing in the internal styles, let me explain this concept in general martial art practice. Dong Jing, being a fundamental philosophical concept, has been applied to different fields, especially art. Of course, martial artists adapted this concept for purpose of their own practice as well. In martial arts, we often noticed this term being used to describe a practice. However, the meaning of this term has evolved over time due to the evolution of the nature of martial art training itself. Since the martial art training involves physical movement basic system, the meaning of Dong and Jing has been attributed to a new definition. From now on, we will focus on the martial meaning. In a martial context, Dong means dynamic and Jing means static. So, in martial art, people used dynamic and static to describe the characteristics of a practice. I'm sure all of you understand the differences between dynamic and static conditions in practice. However, I'd like to further classify these concepts into different categories. Based on years of first-hand research and teaching experience, 
I have classified the concept of dynamic and static into three levels. First, obvious level. Second, subtle level. Third, self-cultivation level. First, obvious level. It's the level that practitioners focus on the differences between dynamic and static characteristics in their movement. If you move, it is considered dynamic, while if you maintain a posture without moving, it is considered static. Since the difference is so obvious, I call it obvious level. To take this a step further, according to the traditional standard, that slow, short-range movement are also considered static, while fast, long-range movements are dynamic. These differences is also very obvious, so I classify them at the obvious level as well. Second, subtle level. At this level, even small physical movements will be considered dynamic. For example, in some standing postures, the usual static practice involves not only a lack of physical movement but also a lack of mental intention. But as long as you have even a small subtle physical movement and even a little intention to guide these subtle movements, it will be considered dynamic, although the movements may be slow or short range. For example, when you stay in the Santi stance, you can just relax the body and the mind. However, at a certain point, you should add small repetitive movements while maintaining the overall stance, as if you are adjusting your stance visually. Actually, the practitioner is adding the small adjustment as the practice on certain aspects in order to gain certain benefits in training. It is an advanced topic and I may discuss it in the future. So, the movements here are small and slow, yet fully intentional. That's why I call it a subtle level dynamic practice. Third, self-cultivation level. This is another important aspect of internal practice. If you have watched my intro videos about the curriculums of the three internal styles, you may recall that I always put self-cultivation at the highest level of each style due to the benefits provided by the style. One can reach the benefit of self-cultivation through practicing the internal style. Yes, it is not as fast and specific as with practicing Xiu Dao, which provided a great deal of benefit if managed well. At this level, one should focus on the real static practice, which is a state having neither physical movement nor mental intention. Later, when the energy rises up, the practice becomes a dynamic one. So, the differences between static and the dynamic lies in the state of the energy activity, not the physical one at all. This is an advanced topic and I will explain this more in my shootout videos in the future. So, if you are interested, make sure to watch my shootout videos. So, to summarize, the, at the self-cultivation level, one should focus on the energy change in the body in practice. The energy change relies on the practice of being static. Alright, so how about internal practice? How do you apply the Dong Jing to the three internal styles? Let me explain it in the next topic. Topic 3. Dong and Jing in internal styles. I always say that an internal style system is a body and the mind system. First, mind here means attitude, the way we perceive our practice or 
what imagery we use in training and in self-defense. Especially the imagery method that I emphasize in prior videos can have a major impact on our practice. Second, body here means the adjustment of movement in the process of realizing the specific imagery. Imagery is the result of our mental work and realized by our body. This is why I'd like to say that at this point that our body follows our mind, or the mind determines the body since the specific imagery will determine body motion. I intentionally wrote the, the title of this video to focus on the Dong Jing concept in a fighting situation. So, to help my students reach a higher level in understanding the overall fighting strategy among the three internal styles, I created two proverbs and borrowed one existing proverb to explain this concept. Please keep in mind, those proverbs are using the imagery theory to describe and guide the practice. As always, I will read them in Mandarin first, followed by the English translation. In Mandarin, they are Tai Ji Yi Jing Zhi Dong, Xing Yi Yi Dong Zhi Dong, Ba Gua Yi Dong Zhi Jing. In English, they are in Tai Chi, static conquers dynamic. In Xing Yi, dynamic conquers dynamic. In Ba Gua, dynamic conquers static. Again, static and dynamic here are relative, not absolute. In other words, there is no absolute dynamic and static. Those are a product of contrasting. Let me explain them one by one. First, in Tai Chi, static conquers dynamic. If you watched my prior video about overall movement patterns in fighting used by the three internal styles, you may recall that Tai Chi's overall strategy is Yan Jin Luo Kong He Ji Chu, or lead the attacking force of the opponent inward and make it fall into an empty place, then add your own force to the withdrawing force of the opponent and send it back. This is the overall strategy in Tai Chi. So, to achieve this result, Tai Chi practitioners usually take a reactive approach in self-defense. Normally, wait for the opponent to attack and then react to it. Therefore, one very popular proverb which I borrowed in this video is this one. Wait for the dynamic and react with the static. Of course, we all know that waiting until the right moment to react requires a much higher level in practice or it would be as fast as the proactive approach. Fast here means reckless. There are certain principles used in guiding this practice, which will be introduced in the future. Now, let's practice our imagination that a Tai Chi practitioner maintain a static approach to deal with the dynamic attack in a self-defense situation. Now, let's move on to Xing Yi. It used a totally different approach compared to Tai Chi. Second, in Xing Yi, dynamic conquers dynamic. To a Xing Yi practitioner, a typical fighting strategy is to constantly attack the opponent once the fight starts. Of course, there is the concept that of Hou Fa Xian Zhi, or to fight back after the op opponent attacks first, but the fist reaches the opponent's body first. However, the overall imagery of Xing Yi fighting is to dynamically apply different martial skills to an opponent while expecting the opponent to constantly change, change techniques. That's why in Xing Yi, 
you always try to imitate a self-defense situation in training so that you will be able to use the dynamic versus dynamic approach in a real self-defense situation. Another famous Xing Yi proverb to describe the attitude and the mentality is Da Dao Hai Xian Man. The literal translation is, is to defeat the opponent who falls on the ground, even so, it is still too slow. In other words, you are never satisfied with your own speed, you can always be faster. It is an interesting way to describe the overall Xing Yi fighting mentality. 3. Yin Ba Gua Dynamic Conquers Static So far, I think you can figure out by yourself regarding the Ba Gua fighting strategy. A Ba Gua practitioner constantly changes position and attack angles to the extent that the opponent appears relatively static. Typical Bagua walking and stepping patterns along with continuously of movement help to achieve such a dynamic approach. Of course, nothing stops the opponents from moving fast, but still you practice Bagua with the goal of stepping, evading and attacking a lot faster than the opponent. Sure, easier said than done. To add to that, the fighting strategy can change as well. The dynamism in movement as well as strategy is the characteristic of Bagua. This is why I said in Bagua, dynamic conquers static. So far, I believe you have a better imagery for the three internal styles in fighting. It reflects the concept of a dynamic and static movement and stillness, O, Dong, and Jing. Topic 4 Demonstration. Yes, so let me correct his movement first. So then go forward, then push here, push out. No, higher a little bit. Yes, don't need it so low. And then knee. Push a little bit more, palm move inward, look at here, open here, here straight, relax here. Then at this moment, then put this kind of small adjusting motion in. Yes, then in. At the same time, the head extends upward while palms extending, extending forward. Yes, then in, relax, contract. Your knees move, knees move the same pattern. Yes. So palm out, and the height extend up, then in, up. That's good. Also, when you push forward, this area extend backward slightly, and grab the ground with the toes for the front foot. Yes. Then at a certain point, just. Stop moving. Then adjust the the posture by moving, the, adjusting the fingers, especially in that finger. Yes, and then bend a little bit, like this. Then same coordination, similar strands. Then here up a little bit, here back a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. That's very good. Topic 5. Takeaways A lot of interesting topics have been covered in this video. Like I said in the beginning, the video did not talk about any specific body parts or basic movements. Instead, I focused on some imagery-related topics. First, Dong, Jing, and their meanings and implications in Chinese philosophy and art have been introduced. Second, Dong and Jing in martial art practice means dynamic and static. Three, specific Dong and Jing imagery in the internal styles along with three proverbs to summarize Dong and Jing in fighting has been elaborated and demonstrated. 
That's end today's video. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.